welcome uh, mr mustafa uh, to tvgme and also to the conference on uh, standards and emerging technology uh, we would like to understand that how this 1m 2m standards you know which have come especially for the iot ecosystem are going to help in the smart electrification you see smart electrification will involve uh, a lot of devices that will need to communicate mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the traditional form of electrification before telecom became so pervasive the devices were there mm -hmm. uh, you had transformers you had switch gear you had protection equipment you had meters and a whole lot of other things uh, it is important now in the smart electrification that all the relevant devices which need to communicate must communicate mm -hmm. sometimes they need to communicate to a central server sometimes they need to communicate with each other sometimes that can be simultaneous so therefore basically we if we consider each of those devices as a machine mm -hmm. what we are talking about is machine to machine communication mm -hmm. and uh, communication to the cloud is now taken as a default so mm -hmm. we don't talk about it that much correct because uh, all of us have now got used to the smartphone and or most of us have got used to mm -hmm. so integrity of data is going to be a very important aspect uh, continuity of communication without interruption and uh, what we call latency in technical terms mm -hmm. for example if i need something to be communicated within a certain amount of time it must happen within that if it happens half an hour later its value may not be good mm -hmm. so i would say integrity effectiveness and finally safety because uh, there are always misguided people in society mm -hmm. i may want to hack the system correct and uh, therefore uh, and i there can be very different commercial value in hacking mm -hmm. as all of us are discovering yeah. as we go deeper into this digital world the wireless spectrums are used for many things today mm -hmm. in the good old days they were used only by the police and the indian army or mm -hmm. the defense forces yeah maybe all india radio mm -hmm. but today spectrum is being used for all kinds of things so we have to ensure that the machine to machine communication happens in a particular spectrum which is reasonably stable mm -hmm. and safe to mm -hmm. operate mm -hmm. now these are all technical some of them are very complex technical issues <coughs> some of them are complex policy issues mm -hmm. so therefore if we do not have standards then there can be a wholesale confusion in terms of implementing on the ground and that is not in the national interest the role of insects in biting wires mm -hmm. so the kind of what we call vermin proof mm -hmm. in electrical engineering specifications we call it vermin proof okay so i'm being very simplistic but i mean the kind of uh, creativity that our insects and animals can demonstrate is quite high so oh, is it quite different than the rest of the world I think so I think oh, because okay. uh, we are a tropical country and mm -hmm. uh, we have many or many more variety of vermin than most people have mm -hmm. there are also thermal issues uh, mm -hmm. we are a very uh, uh, climatically a very different country compared to the uh, western world yeah uh, we can have temperatures in extremes mm -hmm. uh, in this country going from up to 50 degrees maybe even more sometimes and also into the minus range so when we do smart electrification we must ensure that the the technologies products system solutions that are used are capable of operating in what we can popularly call as indian operating conditions okay. so while we learn from foreign standards it is our duty as indian engineers to also formulate and modify some aspects of those standards to take into account indian realities so uh, the since you know as you said that there is a lot of data which is going to get communicated and uh, obviously the ai will obviously help you know in some way yeah so in this smart electrification the ai part has already been uh, you know introduced or built yeah not really because uh, you see the whole ai field is is evolving hmm. and uh, it is only in the last one or two years that it has gained uh, public eye in visibility in the public eye but here uh, in smart electrification we will have to also bring in a complete uh, it and digital approach to work alongside where all this data is is processed through appropriate machine learning techniques 
uh, we will have to develop algorithms to suit our conditions mm-hmm. uh, while some algorithms can be developed based on academic fundamentals uh, the completeness of an algorithm comes only when you also incorporate practical reality yeah uh, that reflect conditions that reflect practical mm-hmm. reality so uh, i think we are very conscious of it and uh, given the strengths of it that we have in india we are after all one of the global leaders in in that field mm-hmm. i don't see too much of a challenge uh, in for india to develop this effectively because i think we have a lot of talent in the country so alongside smart electrification will also be the movement for analytics machine learning and ai but ai as in actionable intelligence yeah no, i think that's a good word you have you know suggested now uh, people should look at that actionable intelligence also uh, i have one more question that you know with the, the renewable energy you know uh, rates going down and the fossil fuel uh, based supplies are you know still on a high side on the power uh, pricing will they be able to survive these uh, coal based uh, power yeah i mean i so let's get a little take two steps back here uh, okay. there is one characteristic of renewable energy that cannot be changed by human beings mm. and that is that it is intermittent mm. so it's not continuous so therefore uh, if i generate renewable energy for a few hours in a day and maybe for a few hundred hours or few thousand hours in a year the question will still remain how do i supply energy as a utility during the balance time mm-hmm. therefore uh, whether we like it or not the traditional forms of generation will continue to be a very important part of the energy mix mm-hmm. however if we can combine storage with renewables one of the big challenges in electricity uh, is that we cannot store it mm-hmm. in real time mm-hmm. uh, whereas with uh, petroleum fuels for example you can store it you can build big tanks and keep it there with agricultural products you can do lot of things to store them for a certain period of time for electricity storage popularly the method that has been used is batteries mm-hmm. the cost of batteries has definitely started coming down technologies have improved uh, i think that uh, the battery production in the world is going up because many countries are going towards electric mobility mm-hmm. so what will happen is that when the economies of scale kick in i i think we in india can expect that the battery prices will dip considerably this can be taken advantage of strategically as a nation mm-hmm. we can leverage this benefit of reduced battery prices to see how it can be blended with our renewable energy program mm. if we do that then the problem of intermittency will be somewhat reduced obviously i cannot store all the energy that i need but i am then moving in a direction where sustainability is becoming higher yes because fortunately we don't have to pay a bill for the sun mm. and uh, it uh, regularly comes out every day uh, if we if, if it doesn't happen we have bigger problems to worry about than that <laughs> so i think that uh, <coughs> traditional forms of generation will continue mm. however their the proportion of the their content in the overall energy mix can reduce significantly if storage becomes viable with renewable energy okay thank you sir thank you for your thoughts and um, you know i'm happy that you know, you brought new perspective in all the three uh, questions you know which we brought in uh, we appreciate your time also you have given to us thank you very much thank, thank you, you sir yeah